Okay, so we're going to talk about human needs, and this is a field of psychology that we've been studying for many years to try to understand what are the basic human needs that all human beings have. So the first one that we're going to be talking about is Maslow. M many of you have heard of Maslow. This goes back to the 1940s where he looked at the different human needs people have, and his pyramid of human needs is probably the most famous. We're going to be talking about three different models that I like. I like all of them, and you can kind of decide which one you like the best to use for your clients. So the first one is Maslow, and the five needs starting at the bottom are physiological needs, physical needs that people have, the next level are safety needs, then love, then self-esteem, and then self-actualization. Self-actualization means using your potential. This is a need that human beings have. And the way that Maslow looked at it is he said that people don't care about second level until they have first level and so on and so forth. Um, at the extreme, people are not interested in using their potential when they're hungry. So it's important for people to get their lower level needs met first, and then they can start moving up in the pyramid and start worrying about safety. And after they have their physical needs, like food and shelter and sleep taken care of, then they're interested in safety, such as different kinds of not only physical safety, but also security, things like buying insurance and things like that. And then love, people are very interested in um, getting love in their life and being loved and giving love, and that's something that's very important. Then self-esteem, feeling good about who you are, and then self-actualization, using your potential. So that's Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and it's something that, it's, it's a tool that I like using with my clients because a lot of clients have seen this or have heard of it. Maybe they took a course where Maslow was mentioned, and I'll ask them to rate themselves on a scale of one to 10 in each one of these five domains. Meaning what I'm asking them is to say on your physical needs, your physiological needs, on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being totally full, totally content, how would you rate yourself? And so they'll go through that with each of these levels and that'll give us a good idea if someone comes up, you know, physical needs are 10, safety needs are 10, love is a five, self-esteem is a five, self-actualization, maybe a two, they don't really feel like they know what their purpose is, they don't really know what their strengths are and so on. So we already have a good map for what we're gonna need to work on in their coaching, which would be love, self-esteem, and self-actualization for that particular client. So again, you can ask your clients to rate themselves from one to 10. So why don't we just take a little break right now so you can see how this works for yourself. I don't like prescribing anything uh, as a therapist or as a coach uh, unless I've tried it myself and I know that it works, I'm able to talk about it. You know, if I was a doctor and I was prescribing medications, I probably wouldn't want to try all the medications, but in my field that I'm in, in therapy and in coaching, I do get to try out all of the different prescriptions. So this is the prescription we'll do right now. Just take a minute and look at these different needs and just assess yourself. How are you doing with your physical needs? Are your physical needs taken care of? A lot of my clients will tell me uh, food is okay, um, uh, maybe a little too much, but uh, sleep is a problem, you know? So you might wanna assess yourself there and safety. Do you feel safe? Do you feel secure? Um, how's love? How's self-esteem? How's self-actualization? So go ahead and do a self-assessment for yourself. Just take a minute. And you can go ahead and pause this if you need a little extra more time. We're gonna move on to the next one that I really like, and this is from Tony Robbins, the famous Tony Robbins. Um, one of the founders of the whole coaching movement, the popularizers of the coaching movement. He has this really nice system of six human needs. And unlike Maslow, they're not in a particular order um, in terms of if you don't have one, you don't care about the next. They're just six very human needs. And he used this to help people understand why they're doing what they're doing. If you're doing something, it means you're motivated to do it. And if you're not doing it, maybe you're not motivated enough. And here are the six prime motivators. Number one, security. It's very important for a lot of people to have a lot of security. 
Some people have very big security needs, some people less security needs. Some people buy all the insurances, some people buy none of them. And that's really important for some people. All of us need security, but you'll notice with some clients, in order for them to get to a 10 out of 10 with security, takes a lot more than another client where you know um, they feel pretty secure with very little uh, actual security. And then the second one is variety. Um, he felt that it's really important or feels that it's really important for people to have variety. But again, for one person, they need to be jumping out of planes to get their 10 out of 10. And for other people, they put a little pepper on their mashed potatoes and they're flying high. Like, woo! That is so exciting. A little extra pepper. So different variety for different people. But we want to assess for our clients, have them self-assess how they're doing uh, in terms of variety. Next one is connection feeling connected, and you can see very similar to Maslow, uh, but using perhaps a little more updated words for some people that they can relate to. And it's really important to try to find which one of the systems really um, speaks to your clients. So you can try different ones um, out. People will do things to get more connection. People will avoid situations that get in the way of their connection. Sometimes people are not playing their music, so to speak, doing what they really want to do because they feel that there may be a loss of connection. Maybe their family won't support them. So it's really important to figure that one out. Next one is significance. I do a lot of work with my clients around significance. I think it's so important for us to recognize our own significance, to feel good about ourselves, and a lot of people just don't. So want to look at your level of significance. How good do you feel there? Again, as we're doing this, you can just self-assess. How would you rate yourself on a one to 10, 10 being fully satisfied? This has nothing to do with how others would assess you, how significant you are, it's how you feel. The next one is growth. Are you growing? That's a basic need, a motivator for human beings to grow. And then finally, contribution, to feel like you're making a meaningful contribution. And a lot of uh, people would look at these, perhaps number five and number six as more spiritual needs that we have to feel that we're growing, to feel that we're making a meaningful contribution. And a lot of people would rate themselves pretty low on those. So those are areas to work on step by step with, in coaching to figure out how do we increase each one of these. And this really makes a happy human being. That's why this is so important. All right, now finally we have Weinberg, which is a system many people have not heard about, but I think it's great. It's called the five levels of pleasure. He calls it the five levels of pleasure and he wrote a book about it. Um, that you can pick up on Amazon called the five levels of pleasure. You start with your physical needs. We're figuring out um, how much of this we have and how important it is to us. And what he found is that a lot of people are spending a lot of time seeking physical pleasure, having more physical things in their life, but not being really happy. That's because it's only the lower level, lowest level of pleasure. It's only the first level of pleasure. You want to move up to the second level and that is love. Love gives us so much more. And it's so much more fulfilling. It's such a higher level of pleasure for us. So he said that we should really start moving to the higher levels of pleasure. And the problem with it is that the lower levels are much easier to attain. They're much easier for people to relate to. And they're much more instant gratification. Whereas love, you actually have to work. You have to work on your marriage. You have to work on your relationships. You have to work on loving yourself. So these areas are a little more refined, a little more subtle but they end up being much more satisfying. And that's why they're so important. The next level is purpose. Having a sense of purpose. That's a really specific purpose for each individual that I feel that I'm doing something meaningful with my life. And that's something that coaching spends a lot of time working with people on to help them find their unique purpose. We'll do another video on that, on different techniques of how to help people find their unique purpose. And that is a higher level pleasure. Even though love is wonderful, feeling that I have a purpose every morning is even better. Now that doesn't mean that I want to sacrifice level one and level two. This is scaffolding. These build on each other. I first want to make sure that I have my physical needs taken care of, but not spend too much time on that. And then I want to focus on love and love is so important and um, feeling connected with other people is so important. And then I want to start looking at a purpose a higher purpose for myself that builds the scaffolding. That's again, a more subtle pleasure that not a lot of people have in their life, but it's so important. Then there's creativity. This is an even more subtle pleasure where a person is able to feel that they are creative. 
that they are doing something meaningful that's level three, but they're bringing something new into this world using their creativity, higher level pleasure. And the deepest level of creativity is the creation of the self, which really connects to this idea of growth, where a person feels that I've learned something, they've actually created more knowledge, they've created more of themselves, where a person stretches themselves in terms of being a nicer person, a more kind person, that is, that is creativity in a, in a very deep way because I'm creating more of myself. I'm creating a deeper reality for myself. And then finally, what he called the highest level of pleasure the human being can have is actually self-transcendence, self where I have an experience where I step out of myself. Sometimes people have this experience when they go to Grand Canyon, they see something beautiful, or when they do something wonderful for another person, they feel that they're not focusing on themselves, they're moving to a higher level of consciousness even. And other people experience this um, when they uh, coach, you know? I experience this when I coach, when I'm getting into a really good coach session and there's a flow, it may feel like an out-of-body experience. I'm really not focusing on myself for this amount of time, I'm focusing on you. And that transcendent experience can be really powerful. Some people experience this in prayer, in spirituality. But it's this experience of stepping out of yourself that it can be extremely pleasurable, but it's also difficult to attain. Some people do their 10,000 hours of meditation to get there. So this level of pleasure is more difficult to attain, at least in ways that are lasting. And they, are, they, they fill us up so much more than physical pleasure. So it's something for us to think about is what are we making our lives about? Are we making our lives about things that will satisfy us in the short term or things that will satisfy us more in the long term? So you can look at all these different models and take a minute right now just to reflect on which model you like best and spend a little time using it as a way of growing and developing with more clarity what it is that you need to focus on for your personal development. And now when we shift this into coaching, when we shift this into the work we do as coaches, we can start using it to help our clients identify what is it that they really need to do some work on, what is it they really want to focus on, and having a system like this can really fast track our coaching because it'll really help us zero in. I have this, I have this, but I'm missing this. And this is where I want to focus my time on are missing these three things. And what would you like to spend your time on first? What seems most important, you know, and help our clients really navigate that and figure out how they'd like to spend their coaching time with us so that they maximize the amount of benefit they get in the amount of time that we have together. So thank you for spending uh, time with me right now uh, in this session, Human Needs. And uh, click on the bottom of the description for our website. You can see all the different offerings uh, that the American School of Professional Life Coaching has where I teach. And we have uh, so many different great programs for people. Get in touch, uh, sign up for our newsletter. You'll be getting all of these uh, links uh, to our new videos as they come out. All right, thanks for joining us.